Hi everyone, this is Pierre Rick from P2 Design. In this video, I will show you how you can quickly create rocky environment and how to use collection instancing to manage bigger animation projects. Simple environments are great to improve your animation composition and set a scale for your motion speed and range. This is a method I used to create my animation wing blade that you can watch here and you have a free access to the Blender file on p2designacademy.com. And if you are curious to learn about animation and rigging, you can also check out my extensive courses also on p2designacademy.com. Let's get started. The environment is made of a simple plane that covers most of the ground. And then I scattered eight different rock or stone models that we are going to create right now. I will start from a new Blender file, press Shift A and add a new plane. From there I will jump into edit mode and I will use the knife tool pressing the K key. And now from the top view I will draw the silhouette of the stones. The idea is to alternate between three sides of edges, one long, one medium and one short. And then you just combine this pattern, two short, one medium, one long, two long, one medium, etc. The idea is to make sure that you don't have all your segment with the same size. Once done, just press enter to apply the cut. From there, you can select the outside faces and just get rid of them. Then select this beautiful end gun and extrude it. And you get your stone profile. From there, you can add a material if you want. Just set a pretty high roughness and use a grayish color and that's fine. Now to create some more interesting pattern on the clip, we will also use the knife tool. So I will go back into edit mode, select the knife tool, and I will cut a straight line, and then I will cut a V-shape under this straight line. From there, I just need to move this edge out to create some kind of lip shape on my cliff. I will repeat the process. This time I will be cutting four edges, as before, I will cut first a straight line that goes through the stone and then a V-shaped line just underneath. Then I can offset this face toward the outside and it will create this little leap shape. This is a super simple method to create rocks and cliffs. The knife tool is pretty nice in this regard and you can achieve diverse style of stones, I would say. It's a great method for animators because it doesn't really require any modeling skill. And that's a good start also for modelers whenever you are creating your base shapes. Once you created several base shapes like that, you can easily combine them by simply piling them one on top of each other, rotating them, scaling them, etc. And you can even use those shapes to create the cracks on the ground or the different of leveling of the ground. I will simply create this big plane that is supposed to be my base ground. And then I will just push in the ground those shapes and slightly rotate them to create those little edges. Like in 15 minutes, you can create all the assets you need for your animation. If you already checked the Blender file, you may have noticed that I have created a main collection for all those assets and I put each object in a single dedicated collection. When using this method, it's important that all the objects have their transformation reset. Basically, they are centered in the world. Now I will add an empty object and under this object properties, I will go to instancing and I can choose collection and I can pick the collection I want. And now the empty will instance one of the object included in the chosen collection. If I duplicate this empty object and I edit the mesh in the original collection, it will be edited in all the instances. What's great with this method is that the modeler can work on the asset separately while the animator is doing his stuff. And once the modeler is done, it can just replace the low poly model by the high poly model in the collection and it will be replaced in your whole scene. So it's a great way to manage your production. You can create proxy geometry, low poly geometry, that is easier to handle when animating, and then replace it with your nice and refined assets. 
In my case, I kept everything low poly because my goal wasn't to create a great environment. It was all about the animation exercise. Now you know how to create very basic assets to populate your environment and create your composition and how you can organize your scene for further development. This is the end of this video. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one.